a shadow emerged from the dark of the wood. It stood in front of Royce. Tall it was, and gaunt and hard as old bones, with flesh pale as milk. Its armor seemed to change color as it moved. Here it was white as new fallen snow. There, black as shadow, everywhere dappled with the deep gray green of the trees. The patterns ran like moonlight on water with every step it took. Will heard the breath go out of Sir Waymar Royce in a long hiss. Come no farther, the lordling warned. His voice cracked like a boy's. He threw the long sable cloak back over his shoulders to free his arms for battle and took his sword in both hands. The wind had stopped. It was very cold. The other slid forward on silent feet. In its hand was a longsword like none that Will had ever seen. No human metal had gone into the forging of that blade. It was alive with moonlight, translucent, a shard of crystal so thin that it seemed almost to vanish when seen edge on. There was a faint blue shimmer to the thing, a ghost light that played around its edges, and somehow Will knew it was sharper than any razor. Sir Waymar met him bravely. Dance with me then. He lifted his sword high over his head, defiant. His hands trembled from the weight of it, or perhaps from the cold. Yet in that moment, Will thought he was a boy no longer, but a man of the Night's Watch. The other halted. Will saw its eyes, blue, deeper and bluer than any human eyes, a blue that burned like ice. They fixed on the longsword, trembling on high, watched the moonlight running cold along the metal. For a heartbeat, he dared to hope. They emerged silently from the shadows, twins to the first, three of them, four, five. Sir Waymar may have felt the cold that came with them, but he never saw them, never heard them. Will had to call out. It was his duty and his death if he did. He shivered and hugged the tree and kept the silence. The pale sword came shivering through the air. Sir Waymar met it with steel. When the blades met, there was no ring of metal on metal, only a high, thin sound at the edge of hearing, like an animal screaming in pain. Royce checked the second blow and the third, then fell back a step. Another flurry of blows and he fell back again. Behind him, to right, to left, all around him, the watchers stood patient, faceless, silent the shifting patterns of their delicate armor making them all but invisible in the wood. Yet they made no move to interfere. Again and again the swords met until Will wanted to cover his ears against the strange anguished keening of their clash. Sir Waymar was panting from the effort now, his breath steaming in the moonlight. His blade was white with frost, the others danced with pale blue light. Then Royce's parry came a beat too late. The pale sword bit through the ringmail beneath his arm. The young lord cried out in pain. Blood welled between the rings. It steamed in the cold, and the droplets seemed red as fire where they touched the snow. Sir Waymar's fingers brushed his side. His moleskin glove came away soaked with red. The others said something in a language that Will did not know. His voice was like the cracking of ice on a winter lake, and the words were mocking. Sir Waymar Royce found his fury. For Robert, he shouted, and he came up snarling, lifting the frost-covered longsword with both hands and swinging it around in a flat sidearm slash with all his weight behind it. The other's parry was almost lazy. When the blades touched, the steel shattered. A scream echoed through the forest night, and the longsword shivered into a hundred brittle pieces, the shards scattering like a rain of needles. Royce went to his knees, shrieking, and covered his eyes. Blood welled between his fingers. The watchers moved forward together as if some signal had been given. Swords rose and fell, all in a deathly silence. It was cold butchery. The pale blades 
slice through ring mail as if it were silk. Will closed his eyes. Far beneath him, he heard their voices and laughter sharp as icicles. When he found the courage to look again, a long time had passed, and the ridge below was empty. <laughs>